Today we're going to learn how to tie the bunny tie, sometimes also called the pillow tie. My name's Lazarus Redbane, and this is theduchy.com. So I'm going to start with a lark's head single column around my partner's wrist. So to create the lark's head, just slip it over my partner's wrist like that, saving me a little time and a little tail pull there. Now I'm going to reverse tension and go around my partner's wrist once. I'm not going to do two reps. I only want four total strands here instead of six. I want it a little thinner because I don't want undue pressure on those wrists when they're separated by going over the head. So I'm just going to do one additional wrap for a total of four. Okay, pull the tails through. In trying to set the tension in your ropes, you want to make sure that there is a gap between these wrists, just enough for you to slip fingers between it like this, but not more than that, or else they'll be able to slip out of the single column later on. So once you have that set, then just lock off the single column with a half hitch the way you normally would. and then set the tightness like that. All right, so now we have the single column tied off, and I chose the lark's head single column because the way I like to tie it off with the half hitch on this side, the tail ends up coming straight out of the cuff, same direction as the fingers, which is what we wanted. We also double check that we have enough space to get a finger between the cuffs, but not much more than that, otherwise the whole thing will slide off, which we don't want. So now, let's get it positioned so we can actually do the bunny tie. So now, have your partner put their arms up over their head like this, and you're looking to have the arms kind of go forward and then back and then bend at the elbows like this down to the back of their neck. Now, not everybody has the flexibility of allowing this to be pulled down very, very hard, so you've got to work within the limits of what your partner can do. But this is the general position we're looking for, wrists like this at varying levels of strictness. So this is quite strict, and then this is a little more comfortable for most people. This can be a challenging position, remember that, so keep good communication with your partner. So once you have them in the position, now you need to tie off this tail in such a way that it keeps the wrists in this position. So to tie this tail down onto your partner's chest to keep these wrists in the position, if there was already a chest harness here, or maybe a waist harness, something like that, you could just take the tail and tie it into that. If there's something already there, use it. But in this case, we don't have that, so we're going to now tie this down into place. And we're going to use a technique very similar to what you see in Gote Shibari. So we'll just wrap this around our partner. Then we'll wrap it over top of itself to go around a second time. And then underneath the stem. Now reverse our tension back to the middle. That will tend to add a little tension to the wrists that you may have lost when you started doing this tie, but you can adjust things now if you need to. So you reverse your tension back to the opposite quadrant. Now reach through, hook the tail up on this side like this. Then bring it down to the opposite quadrant again. Now you can put your fingers in the front and kind of move the ropes like this to get your fingers in place. It also helps you organize those ropes and make them lie flat, then hook the tail and bring it through again on this side. And then wrap the tail around the stem once like this. So you've just done an X friction, locking this strap in place around your partner's lower chest. This will keep things very nicely in position. Now, depending on the length of rope you may have started with, you may be nearly out of rope or you may have enough to do another whole wrap. And it turns out I do. And so I'm just going to use this up by making another strap across my partner's upper chest. So we'll just go around, under the stem, around again, since I have enough rope, under the stem, like this. So now we'll reverse tension, and I'll lock this off with a square lashing, also called a half moon friction although it's really kind of two half moons. There's one half moon, and then there's the other half moon. Tighten all that up there nice and firmly. 
and then wrap it around the stem one more time, like that. So depending on how much rope you have left over, you can use it up in a variety of ways. If you have more than I have, you could go over the shoulders, maybe interweave it into the, some of the straps in the front, and then bring it back across the other shoulder and tie it off on this side. I don't have that much. Uh, I could wrap it around the stem going down, down into here someplace. Um, but I think I'm going to wrap it around the stem going upwards, just because I think it looks a little bit better. And the purpose of this is not necessarily high security. So the fact that she might be able to reach the rope up here is not super important to me for this particular purpose. In a different case, okay, sure, I might end it up some other place. But since the point of this one is to look nice, I'm just going to wrap it up here until I run out of rope and then tuck the ends between the strands to lock them in place like that. So I have this sort of vine look right there, which is quite attractive. So here we are, the completed bunny tie, not a super strict one. The wrists are not down as far as it's possible to make them, but this is a little bit more sustainable for most people, something like this. Took the tail down, created two straps, and then used up our rope here. Now another way you can tie the wrists, if you don't like the single column concept, is to use a double column. Again, you want to have it a little loose in order to get it to not impact the wrists too much. And we're going to use a load-bearing double column concept. So I'm going to use a relatively short piece of rope here. So I tie a double column on the wrists and I've used up all of my rope. So I've just grabbed my new rope and I'm going to tie a wrap and cinch double column. Use whatever double column you like, but I'm just going to use the wrap and cinch this time. All right. So I've got my wraps. I'm going to twist the ends like that, wrap them around each other, bring them back to the top, cinch, and then tie it off. With a square knot. All right. So you can see here, I now have a nice set of double columns around my partner's wrists. And there's some space on either side of that center line, which is what we want. Number one, it gives, uh, gives them a little bit more flexibility to move, but it gives us a path to turn this into a load-bearing double column. So now I'm going to grab another piece of rope, and you could choose whether you want this one to be a, a half-length rope or a full-length rope, depending on how much tying you want to do into the harness on the chest later on. I'm going to choose a relatively short piece of rope. So I'm going to take the bite end, and I'm going to put it next to the wrist on one side. So take the bite, get it between the wrists to the other side like this, then take that same bite, and put it through next to the other wrist coming from the back to the front. So kind of coming through this path right here, like that. So we now have the rope doing a bend around those center lines, then hook the tail through the bite like this. You've basically just created a lark's head that wraps around the center lines of your cinch like this, and then tighten that lark's head down on it. You've now converted the double column to a load-bearing double column. If I were to pull on this center line, it will collapse that lark's head onto the cinches, but not onto the bands going around the wrist. That means I can pull here without tightening the cuffs, and that's what we want. Now that we have this load-bearing double column concept, you can take this tail and tie it into a bunny tie the same way as shown before. So there it is, the completed bunny tie from the back and from the front. My name's Lazarus Shredbane, this is thedutchie.com. We hope you learned a little something, and as always, thank you.